Good morning. Happy Tuesday. I had someone ask me about two cases and I honestly don't know what they intended, how they intended to uh, merge the two cases to, because they talked about two separate things. I had a commenter ask about Virginia v. Black, which is a Supreme Court case where they invalidated as unconstitutional, as a violation of the First Amendment, a Virginia law which made cross-burning illegal. And it made the intent portion, because, because you have to remember that just burning a cross in and of itself uh, doesn't signify the intent of the cross burner. Um, admittedly, in the South, in Virginia, it is, was traditionally a tool of the KKK to burn flags, and they did so with the intent to t intimidate. But that's what they did with the intent to intimidate. It doesn't necessarily mean that a subsequent person is going to have the same intended effect. But Virginia said, screw it. If you burn a cross, that's prima facie evidence that you intended to intimidate, to threaten. And threats, threats of violence specifically uh, are exempted from the First Amendment, from First Amendment protections. And so a state can criminalize them. But since the state basically threw out any requirement for the state to prove the intent to threaten, to threaten physical harm, physical violence, then the statute itself was unconstitutional because we don't know whether any specific incidence of burning a flag is or is not an intent to intimidate. I mean, maybe somebody really doesn't like X's and they intend to burn an X because they, they lost a game of tic-tac-toe and their opponent was playing X's. And the state can prove, well, it's a cross. I mean, it's just a cross that's kind of tilted. So the, you, you get the point. Um, in, order, in order for the state to, have a, to legislate against cross burning, they have to prove the intent to threaten, the intent to intimidate. The, uh, the case he juxtaposes it with, uh, in he went as far as to say, can't the, can't the state show that it's intimidation to burn a flag? He looked at uh, Texas v. Johnson. Texas v. Johnson, Johnson was marching in an anti-war parade. Another protester stole a flag from a flagpole, a U.S. flag, brought it to Johnson, and Johnson then burned it in public. So he burned a, a flag that belonged to the state. He burned somebody else's flag. Um, and the commenter brought this up and he, and he mentioned it. And to address that point, I want to say he wasn't charged with theft or with um, accessory or conspiracy or anything along those lines regarding the theft of the flag or the burning of public property or vandalism or anything like that. All he was charged with was burning an American flag in violation of Texas's statute against burning American flags. So because that's the only thing he was charged with, that's the only thing that the Supreme Court had to address. And at that point, uh, again, the, uh, the Texas statute was overbroad because it caught political speech in it. It was illegal to burn a flag. Now, the, the, the Supreme Court wasn't looking at it specifically in Johnson's situation, but a person could burn a United States flag with purely political intent meaning to, to convey a political message. And so it doesn't matter what Johnson's particular intent was. That statute was overbroad. That statute caught constitutionally protected speech in its web. So that statute was null and void. Therefore, Johnson's conviction under it was also null and void. Now, whether or not you can intimidate or threaten a government by burning a flag, I'm not entirely sure. The, uh, the government, unlike uh, the people who were facing uh, the, the cross burnings, the government has security apparatus to take care of itself. And in all honesty, the government isn't supposed to be entirely comfortable with its perch at the top of our little society. In the United States, the government is supposed to be uh, turned over every so often. The president is only in office for so long. Uh, senators and congressmen are only in office for so long. Mayors, governors, assemblymen, etc. They're only in office for so long. And people have every right and are encouraged 
to express their dissatisfaction with the government and to implement and foment change to the government. The government shouldn't, the government certainly is not beyond criticism. Um, now, theoretically, if you, if you do somehow manage, if the government manages to prove that you, you got to remember that in Virginia v. Black, the, the whole the whole reason why that cross burning thing was found unconstitutional is because the state didn't prove a threat to intimidate or a threat of physical violence. Johnson v. Black didn't deal with threats. If the state or if the federal government wanted to implement some sort of a law banning the burning of anything, it doesn't really matter what that thing is, they'd have to find some exception to the First Amendment in order to cubbyhole it in there. So, uh, like, there's 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 various there's various carve outs for um, for language that can be regulated. So, language that tends to incite an immediate breach of the peace, uh, language that is incitement to violence, language that is defamatory, language that is uh, threats. There's there are various categories categories, various carve-outs of the First Amendment that the government can regulate. So in order to make anything, uh, burning anything as speech illegal, the government has to uh, make sure that they're within one of those carve-outs that they can regulate. Uh, the, the draft card burning, even though that was speech, the government had a, had, had a, it was conduct-based legislation and the government had a significant interest in keeping draft cards intact in preventing any defacement of draft cards so that was like a that was a carve out for why they could prevent the burning of that particular thing anyway i've rambled long enough i hope i've answered the question thanks for watching have a great day